I know back in the day, you are big, you were one of the early people to come in and realize that there's a serious magnesium deficiency in the United States. Um, and you were one of the very first to start talking about that online, which is awesome. Not too long ago, maybe a year or so ago, I learned about a new form that was developed at MIT called L-theanate. I think I saying that right. The- Theorinate. Threonate. Um, for, for brain, threonate. Yeah. yeah. For brain health. I'm curious, uh, are you, do you, are you familiar with this form? And given that you're into all things brain health, w- what are your thoughts on it? I am familiar with this form. My interest was also piqued when I read some of the earlier animal studies that had shown so that that this specific form, this magnesium L3 and 8, was a uh, specific form of magnesium that could cross the blood-brain barrier better uh, than magnesium not in that form, and that it like improved cognitive function and prevents the loss of synapses and reverses memory deficits and all sorts of like amazing stuff. Um, of course, it was very high concentrations in, in animal studies, but. My excitement for that is still kind of on hold because there was a clinical study, one clinical study published actually showing a high dose of magnesium 3 and 8, something like 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day, depending on the person's body weight, for 12 weeks. The study claimed that it improved cognitive ability and uh, relative to placebo. But when you look closer at the data, the first thing that kind of jumps out is that They looked at whether or not this, you know, and this is pretty high dose they were giving people, you know, 1.5 grams or 1,500 milligrams a day is a lot. Mm -hmm. There was a very meager increase in plasma magnesium levels, Hmm. very small, no difference in red blood cell magnesium. So like getting inside tissues would be some, and red blood cells are, by the way, usually a a marker for brain. Things that get into red blood cells uh, are, are sometimes used as biomarkers for things that get into the brain, for example, like DHA. And so there was no change in red blood cell magnesium. And there was tons of magnesium being excreted in the urine. So people that were taking this versus placebo. So people that were taking this magnesium 3 and 8 were essentially peeing out most of it. There was four cognitive tests that were done. And if you look individually at each of those cognitive tests, there was no, like the confidence inter- interval, like there was no real significance. But when you pulled all four together, then you could say that it was improving cognitive performance with all four of them pulled together. A little kind of, hmm. a little, you know, I would say, a little yeah, little. a little manipulation <laughs> there just to get the p-value you want, the significance you want. So I would say that I absolutely think magnesium is really, really important 